Hi, ich wollte nur mal kurz sagen, dieser Podcast hat jetzt auch einen Newsletter, damit du keine Folge mal so aus Versehen verpasst und damit du mitbekommst, wenn es eine Aktion oder ein Special rund um Binweg Bouldern gibt. Den Newsletter, den findest du auf meiner Steady-Seite, das ist steadyhq.com slash binwegbouldern und natürlich auch auf binwegbouldern.de. Das war's, viel Spaß mit dieser Folge. If I follow the rock, I'm not gonna board anymore and I thought I need uh, two or three different life. Hi and welcome to episode 131 of Binweg Bouldern. My name is Juliane Fritz and my guest is no one else but Yuji Hirayama, one of the best climbers in Japan. He was the first climber from Japan to win a climbing world cup in 1991. The first international climbing star from Japan who inspired so many other young people in his country. And now he's a very active member of the Japanese climbing scene. He owns a few gyms and organizes a very successful series of bouldering competitions in Japan, the North Face Cup, that you can compare a little to the Boulder Bundesliga here in Germany with its division system. So in this episode you will hear about that, we will dive into Yuji's biography and successes and you will learn a few things about the climbing history and culture in Japan and much more. I met Yuji in the Boulder Lounge Chemnitz at the Hold Together event where a few gym owners and route setters met. That is the business trip that Yuji mentions in the interview. Thank you, Yuji, for the talk. A big thank you to all the people listening to this podcast and to the people that support me with my crowdfunding on Steady. That helps me a lot to keep this podcast going. And if you would like to help too, go to steadyhq.com and look for Binweg Bouldern. And the link is also in the show notes of this episode and on binwegbouldern.de. Thank you for your support and now have fun with this episode. Yuji, you were born in 1969 in yeah. the area of Tokyo in mm -hmm. Japan. And you grow up one to be one of the best climbers of your country. And I would like to talk about your climbing history and also a little bit about the climbing history, of course, in Japan and how you perceived it. Because, well, Japan is pretty good at climbing or Japanese athletes are pretty good. And at first, of course, I would like to know about you. How did you grow up and was sport something that was important to you when you were growing up in your family? So was it part of your life? My parents is uh, they were not uh, into the sport. They had like a own factory and they always work like Japanese people, you know. What uh, kind of factory? Um, like making a metal, like a boat hanger. Uh -huh. They could make yeah. and this kind of form they could make, you know. Yeah. And every time when I go back from the school, they were working on, and I think they are really busy, so they accept everything what I want to do, you know. So if you said I want to try a sport, yeah, yeah, I want to play baseball. Okay, let's do it. If I want to go running or studying something. They just uh, let me try. Mm -hmm. So I grew up um, family pretty much free uh, because I think one reason they are too busy to take care of me, you know. <laughs> okay, so what was the first thing you tried? Uh, first the first thing I sport? Tried, first sport, uh, baseball. Uh -huh. I think all the kids my age uh, in Japan, they wanted to be a baseball player. Okay. And then I also like to run because I think there was a several uh, great runner in Japan, marathon runner. Mm -hmm. I was uh, really um, curious about running and then also I wanted to be a great runner. Uh, I just uh, started when I was 10 years old. And so baseball and then running, I always did it uh, until... I was 12, baseball until 12, and then running until 15, and then... Also, like, in a professional way? No, just like, you know, I think I just wanted to be a great athlete, I think. So I just uh, play baseball really hard, and then also running really hard, too. Every morning I go to school, I go to the ground, 
only <laughs> maybe few people runs in a f- track and field. Yeah. And then I was one of them. And mm-hmm. every day, every morning I go to school, I think I run、uh, f- five, ten kilometers, you know, every day from、oh. uh, age of ten to twelve. So, what was the fascination for you with running? I don't know exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to be good or I wanted to be great. And I had a dream to be a gold medalist of the、uh, marathon. Yeah. Just to run every morning, be strong or be better. Just have a goal,、yeah. I feel. Did you have an idol, like someone you looked、mm-hmm. up to and wanted to be like him? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, who was that? His name is、uh, Toshihiko Seko, just a great runner.、Yeah. Uh, I just saw on TV okay, yeah. the marathon race. He was、uh, really strong, and I saw some races he won.、Mm-hmm. And then it was,、uh, I think, eight or nine years old I was, and just like、uh, fixing my mind, and I just follow him. And were you a kid that did not like to go to school and want, wanted to run all the time? or? It's more like, like that, you know. I just wanted to I go to school, but then the study is not、uh, interested. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to run every morning. Yeah. And then somehow you found climbing. How did that happen? Yeah.、Um, <laughs> I think I was、uh, very small, one of the smallest.、Uh, In the class, and I grow when I was 16, 17 immediately. Yeah. Until there, I was always like、uh, the smallest. And to do something, I always wanted to be、uh, the best or something like this, you know? So, always frustrated not to be in a, in a good or best. And I think somehow when I was、uh, 14, I start to feel frustrated.、Mm-hmm. And then I started to go mountain.、Can、you wanted to run up the mountain? Kind of. Okay.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this way, it's more like competing by yourself inside of you, not the competing with other. And that、uh, was less stress for me.、Mm-hmm. So I, go, I start to go mountain. But at the same time, I think I like. To be in a mountain. My uncle lives、uh, in a countryside, and then every year I go、oh, by bicycle、uh, like 100 kilometers from my uh, uh, house from,、mm-hmm. to, from Tokyo. And I just see every time mountain, and oh, love to go mountain one day. And then I think I was like 13, 12 years old, and then I, I ride the bike. And I reached the mountain.、Um, okay, why not to go running? And you did that all on your own? Oh, yes, yes. How old? What did you say? I was 13 years old. Very young, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very adventurous. Yeah,、uh, I think I was curious kids and、mm-hmm. then、uh, always wants to challenge something. And, and I also I had a goal like a, to, to be like a gold medalist or something like this. So it's always like. Competition mind in somehow, but then also just being in nature, it was like uh, uh, my part of uh, my uh, peaceful moment.、Mm-hmm. So,、um, 13 years old, ride a bike from Tokyo to my uncle's house, and then from uncle's house to go mountain by bike. It always like, you know, no hesitation, just like do it、uh, how I feel. And then my parents. I guess they are worried, but then、uh, let me try or let me go like this, you know. How long were these trips?、Uh, it's like 100 kilometers from yeah, my yeah, ho- yeah. home to go mountain.、Mm-hmm. And then from、uh, there, base of mountain to go top of mountain, like only an hour and a half because it's、uh, not so high, like 800 meter peak. And that was like, you know, so nice that、uh, when you arrive to the top of the mountain, you see the, all the view. And then、uh, the lunch was so 
delicious, <laughs> okay, you know, yeah, more yeah. than uh, usual. Mm. And then I start to go, okay, next one, looking at uh, the map, this mountain and another mountain. And then I start to, to follow, like, you know, all the mountain, uh, time by the time. And, and then uh, after a little while, oh, if I want to go higher mountain, there's a rock, there's a the ice, there's a the snow. And then I start to to curious about uh, rock climbing. Okay, and um, were you alone with this passion? Or was there someone at your age who also liked doing this? Mm, okay. <laughs> no, it's all, uh, all... It was just you. By myself. Yeah, okay. But uh, in high school, I met uh, some friends... Until there, always uh, I was like an engine, you know. So I, I bring my parents or I bring my friends. It's always like I ask them, mm. do you want to go mountain? Mm. And then I brought them. And then in high school, it was uh, one club. Like a mountaineering club. A mountaineering school, uh, club. Mm -hmm. And I meet uh, like 10 same age uh, friends who wants to go mountain. So from there, we go like in every two, three months, different mountain. Okay, so you could share that. And you you just wanted to talk about how you started rock climbing. So okay. Yeah. Can you go on there? <laughs> yeah, and then uh, uh, with these friends, we went to go to um, a mountain shop, mountain gear shop. Yeah. And the one of the guy... He just uh, come to me, oh, do you like to go climbing? And then uh, we say, actually, yes, you know, mm -hmm. because, uh, yeah, we want to go more difficult or higher mountain. And we thought the climbing, it's one of the skill mm -hmm. to go or oh, higher mountain. So we say yes. And he brought us a week after climbing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so like you went together with him? Yes. And he showed you how yeah. to use the gear. Yeah, but like an interesting thing, why he asked me, you know, and he said, oh, we are so interested about the climbing gear. And then I remember climbing gear was so shining. Mm -hmm. And we really thought, oh, it's looking good. <laughs> it's nice. And, and then, yeah, he asked us actually to go climbing. And we went... So was he like a coach? Oh yes, he he was uh, like a guiding, mm -hmm. climbing guide. But and he also worked at that shop. At the shop, okay, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's working at the shop, and then he's uh, like a guiding for outdoor climbing. Maybe he he thought like you know we are good client maybe you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, he brought us uh, at the crack and. Uh, We climb and uh, for me it was like I'm not gonna board anymore. Some yeah, uh, so you are not gonna be bored anymore. Yeah, I thought like this um, because I think it's a, such a small rock. We started so many different faces by the route. Mm -hmm. This border problem or this route yeah. every time shows us different. Ah, you saw all the possibilities. If I yeah, follow yeah. the rock. I'm not gonna board anymore, and I thought I need uh, two or three different life. <laughs> so since then, actually, continue today. Uh, I I have a kind of same mindset. Mm. I just want to go out climbing and try to to challenge like new things. So it started uh, with rock climbing, but you already told me that you liked the competition. You were a competition climber, very successful. When did that start? Um, I was 18. A competition wasn't exist uh, until uh, these days. Uh, we know that in Europe there's a sport climbing competition, but then it what didn't happen in Japan. What year was it? It was uh, 87. Yeah. And then our... All the friends actually, they organize one competition and then we participate. Where was it? It was uh, the Jogasaki Seaside Cliff in Japan. Uh huh. Rock. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I think 
I thought I'm uh, the strongest, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my result was a sad place mm -hmm. because uh, the three guys, uh, actually four guys, sent the final route. Mm -hmm. Actually, not final route. It was a qualification route, and then final route, they cancelled somehow. I mm -hmm. think it was mm -hmm. rain or mm -hmm. something. So for them, we send it. Fastest guy won the competition, second fastest, mm -hmm. second, and then third fastest. It was me. And that's why. So, but then, you know, uh, in my mind, oh, I, I'm the strongest. I'm the strongest always I, in my mind, you know. Mm -hmm. But just, uh, it's a time, okay. Mm -hmm. But then my mode, training mode, is always like 120% from the first day when I started climbing from uh, this competition period always like 120 percent to train i thought at the time if i stop i will step back mm -hmm. so i always train hard so this was i'm um, like a do it yourself competition like someone organized this how many people were there i think um, 30 40 people yeah okay um, were there people watching um, it was a seaside cliff and of course, yes, some people are watching. Yeah, it was a great atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And then I remember it was a uh, lot of fun, you know. Yeah. And how did it go on after that? Um, just like, you know, I was uh, waiting for next competition because uh <laughs> I'm the strongest, so I just uh, going to be a winner for mm. the next competition. So I just wait and then train. And then next competition, it was like uh, two, three months after and then won the competition. So, <laughs> <laughs> But like, yeah, it's young, young mind, you know, um, always like uh, very aggressive. And I don't know today that was a good... Uh, mindset by myself you are not sure if that was a good mindset uh yeah very competitive you know yeah i think it's it's not uh friendly sometime yeah. with the people so so it seems like today you changed your mind about that i think yeah because i uh, with my ages and have a family and with the relationship with everyone cannot be uh, like this forever uh because i think For the business, uh, this time, I this is like a business trip. You need a partner, you need uh, friends to grow the business. So by the time, it was 17, 18, you know, yeah. and then today I'm 54. Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just tell me how this competition scene developed then in Japan. Today, it's completely different. We have artificial walls. Mm -hmm. We have a very successful Japanese mm -hmm. climbing team. <laughs> And you were, I guess, part of this development. So can you tell us uh, how did it develop from these rock competitions mm -hmm. to competitions on an artificial wall or in the gym? How did that come? Oh, yeah. I think it was... At the time, even worldwide, it's the same situation. Uh, most of the competition was on outside. Mm. And then 80, around 87, 88, uh, artificial wall developing and then organizer start to make a competition in uh, artificial wall. I think it, I just um, dream about to be a good climber. Uh, like you know world level so following a competition was kind of natural to looking up uh, best climber and then uh, to be like a best like worldwide yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and how did you like the change from rock to um, artificial walls was the sport the same to you or did you miss this being um, outside I thought it's better okay why Because uh, it's it's so difficult to to adjust the best route for the competitor mm -hmm. and natural rock, they have to chip the hole yeah. or create something. So and then artificial wall, root setter adjust everything. You know, 
So I thought it's better. At the same time, in this way, we can have a lot of audience mm -hmm. and good energy. You yeah, know, it's the around. same development in Europe, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to damage nature and yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good thing, yeah. Yeah, and that's why I think it was uh, yeah, it much more faster to develop a competition scene. I don't know if people like who are listening uh, don't know um, that you, as you said, you chip the rock like, like you. How, how do you say? Yeah, with a hammer or drill. Or... Uh, yeah, then with a hammer or something like you push rock off the wall mm -hmm. so that the root changes. That's the thing you would not want anyone to do today. So, <laughs> um, but in the first years of competition climbing, people did that. I think, yeah, the, especially in Europe, you know, in, at the beginning of the competition scene, I think I remember uh, Bartonecchia in Italy, uh, many these kind of things, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good thing that uh, we do, don't do that anymore. Um, let's look at your big successes. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, or, I mean, I know those international successes. What was your, uh, in Japan... Like, was there any uh, competition where you were the national champion also? I did not look that up, I must okay. say. <laughs> um, yes, um, but then only a few times national championship that I won because I was in France for seven, eight years, mm -hmm. living in France and competing uh, internationally. Mm -hmm. So I didn't go back home uh, Not often. Yeah, okay. And so I didn't compete much. But then, uh, yeah, how, how, how many times? Maybe three, four times. Yeah, okay. Uh, I became... Uh, so you were also a national champion. And then the year uh, uh, 1991 uh, is, yeah. <laughs> was important where you won the first uh, League World Cup and the Rock Masters in Arco. Yeah, that was a big thing for me. <laughs> yeah, um, what was it like? <laughs> But you know, uh, my first competition which I won, it was in Nuremberg, yeah, 89. And to win this competition, I didn't imagine it's come so early. I was 20 mm -hmm. years old because I thought uh, as a Japanese climber, a uh, European climbing scene is much more developed. And I thought need more time, you know, to catch up uh, European climber. But then it comes suddenly, 89, and I won the competition. Uh, What competition was it? It was uh, 89 Franken Jura Cup. Mm -hmm. All the top climber from the, all around the world come to this competition, and then I won. So I was sh kind of sh happy, but at the same time shocked, you know, because it comes suddenly... And then it comes like, you know, all the time in my mind that uh, I should win the competition. I should win the competition. So you had pressure. That, I had yeah. a kind of pressure. And so it was 89, 1990, I couldn't uh, win the comp, anything. And then 1991, finally, ah. I won. So did you have to develop your mindset? Because you had all the pressure and you had to deal with it and then... You did it, and how did you do it? <laughs> um, luckily, uh, I met uh, a French guy, uh, Francois Lugelon. Mm -hmm. He also he became uh, world champion in 1990. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, kind of a training partner, and then also motivator each other. We push each other. And I think... We learn each other, actually. I, th I think he also learn maybe from my side, but uh, always push each other. Also, small technique or... And then also training. We train a lot. I think this kind of thing helps a lot. Yeah. To train with someone who's as strong as you. Yeah. yeah. Same level. Or he was, uh, like, you know, the stronger. And that was, um, I think, uh, biggest step. And then still, I couldn't uh, manage my mental side. It's strange, huh? Arco Rock Master. It was, uh, I think I, I had an injury and I, I couldn't train properly. Kind of, I, I went there, relaxed mood. And then the suddenly also the win the competition. Mm -hmm. So um, 
my mental uh, because you thought you could not compete as good because of the injury so you did not have such high expectations mm -hmm. yeah so i didn't have a high expectation and i was kind of relaxed mood mm -hmm. and but then when you win the competition the confidence level goes like very high and then uh, 1991 my first world cup First World Cup win? Yeah, yeah. it was uh, in Tokyo. Yeah. My parents are there. My, oh, wow. my <laughs> friends are there. So it was like a kind of a highlight, you know. Yeah. So was it a time when uh, when you win such a competition that you become really a star in the scene? All the people know you? Was it like that? Um, in Japan, a little bit. Yeah. Because uh, I was like, you know, kind of like the guy breakthrough of... Uh, image because we thought oh Japanese climber we are far from European climbing scene mm -hmm. we need um, a lot of year to catch up to European climber so but then I I'm kind of like a breakthrough first year second year mm -hmm. so every climber and then journalist know about me Can you say that you were like also influencing other climbers in Japan to I think become so. better? Because we know that, as I already said today, mm. Japanese climbers are really good in competition. So can you say like you were their role model? It's uh, yeah, I don't know best word to say, but then I think so. I train with Francois, and then he's uh, good, and then I always look at him. And I thought I can be like him too. So, uh, in, for Japanese climber, Yuji breaks through the image, and I'm kind of like next to them. They could imagine, oh, maybe I can do it. Yeah. Mm. So, like, I think I gave them uh, a confidence to confidence, and then uh, we can do. You know. Yeah. So I, they have a better mind than uh, past i think today we know that in japan there are hundreds mm -hmm. of climbing gyms mm -hmm. and of course that all these gyms with artificial walls might be a big influence because the people have so many places to train it's a big influence i guess that the people are so successful when did all this start ah, like the growth of the sport okay. in japan was it while your career or was it afterwards or Okay. How did that happen? I think it's uh, all like related. Yeah. But then it was a very small, fine line. The generation after me, like uh, Sachi Ama mm -hmm. or Akio, they make more thicker this uh, relation. And then once it's become bigger, it goes like, you know, much bigger. And then now with Tomoa and Kokoro, Yoshiyuki, Miho, again, they make more bigger relation to... Uh, What kind of a relationship do you have to these people? Are you a training friend or did you um, climb together? Yeah, even, <laughs> you know, Akio and then Sachi, between me, 20 years differences, you know. Uh, we climb together, mm. but then uh, only... This ages, I think new generation like uh, Tomoa, Yoshiyuki, they are my son's age. Yeah. We don't climb together. <laughs> okay. And but then, like you know, I worked our federation until three years ago. So I was a vice president. Yeah. Just before Tokyo 2020, I quit. But uh, until there, four years, I worked on. So I didn't coach them, but then somehow I delayed it. I communicate a lot with the coaches and uh, uh, who else, managers. And so uh, I didn't uh, coach them, but then somehow I you helped was always the, the development. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess a lot of people want to know... Uh, how are they so successful? What are they doing different? I don't know if you um, have any answers to these okay. questions. <laughs> um, I think, you know, they now they know that many good climbers just next to them. 
So they have a good image and then they have confidence, I think they could do it or something like this. And so, like, every time when they look at the visually good climber, automatically or naturally,、mm. they have a good image of movement, they have good image of training, they have good image of successful climbing life. So, it's coming like、uh, more and more, I think, naturally. So, this is、uh, the biggest part. And,、okay. and then, other, other things. I think genetically we are not so big, small, and then light. And then also, when I'm looking at、uh, Asian people and then the European people, for example,、um, we are more flexible, maybe.、Uh, yeah. Okay.、Um, and、uh, is there an athlete from Japan that you really like and look up to, and where you sometimes think, oh, I want to know your secret? <laughs>、ah. Is there someone that you really like watching? Oh, in fact. Or she? <laughs>、uh, all of them. All Every of them, time、yeah. <laughs> uh, when, when I see young climbers, how they move, they show me new technique, new trick all the time. Tomoa, for example. Crazy, you know, how he m o v e and I always want to try how he m o v e Of course, I cannot do it, you know, <laughs> but it's always like, you know, they perform much better than me or better than our age. I always、uh, impressed by them. And now,、um, yeah, Futaba, Miho, yeah,、hmm. Yoshiyuki. Kokoro, they are always i m p r e s s me. Yeah. And、um, you are today also a part of the climbing scene because you are also a gym owner.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, it's a climbing gym that you own and a bouldering gym, a climbing gym called Climb Park Base Camp, and the bouldering gym, the Urban Base Camp.、Um, as there are so many gyms in Japan, Were you thinking, like, oh, I have to think about something special? I have to do something differently because my gym has to be not like the other ones. So,、mm -hmm. did you have a special idea?、Um, yeah, when I started, I put the name、uh, Basecamp、mm. and mean like everyone can come, like, you know, from young to old、mm -hmm. or women. Boys, or everyone can come and then everyone can push each other or communicate each other. This kind of space that I wanted to make.、Uh, maybe everyone thought the same way. But <laughs> and then also,、uh, until I opened it, all the climbing gym were spray wall、mm -hmm. in Japan at the time. And The visual things I thought it's important, so we start to make、uh, like a color hold with、uh, the line. Now it's、uh, everywhere, it's、mm -hmm. the similar,、yeah. but then it was.、Uh, but do you talk about bouldering, but also about rope climbing? Rope climbing. So there were no defined routes in, in the rope climbing gym? It was、uh, on a tape. Okay. A spray wall with a tape. That was uh, the uh, Japanese climbing scene.、Uh -huh. And then European climbing wall was、uh, kind of empty, I thought. Okay, yeah. Too simple、um, because not many holes. It was, it was, you know, 14, 15 years ago. Now not the same. but... So I, I just wanted to make the, you can see the line clearly. But then also more hold. Yeah. I wanted to make more attractive way. So the, the line with the color, but then the more bigger hold and then much more hold than usual.、Mm -hmm. And today, it, everyone does.、Yeah. So it was uh, not, uh, it was special, but then today it's not special. I think to, to be、uh, special, you always have to. To create something no one does, you know?、Yeah. And I think for me, it, the, the climbing is、uh, what I'm interested in to, to make a new record or new things. It's always like, you know, I want to be、uh, no one does. Did you develop other new ideas in your gym? 
Oh yeah. Um, good question. <laughs> uh, we create a competition. Mm-hmm. It's called the Northwest Cup. Actually, it's uh, new things in climbing scene, but then it uh, exists from uh, soccer. Uh, division system. Okay. Division one, division two, division three, division four, division five. Uh, because like, you know, in Japan, everyone like to compete, but then uh, everyone has a different level. So we create division one. This is like a top level, like a world cup level. Yeah. Division two, it's a national level. Yeah. And then division three, uh, more like, you know, and then uh, football, soccer, yeah. is the same. Division one, it's a Bundesliga. Yeah, yeah, Division yeah. two, the Bundesliga two, something like this. We could So at this, this competition, we have like uh, on one day finals in all the different divisions taking uh, place on one day? We make a final in a day, but then we make a qualification mm. each different region with from division one to five. This is for the men. Division one to four. This is for the girl. And then uh, under twelve, under ten, under eight, we make like ten different division each region, and then we make a grand final. In uh, March, mm-hmm. every year in March, yeah, we make uh, again qualification, half final, and then final. So, how long does all this these games games uh, take place? <laughs> it's a long, long way. Actually, we usually start the beginning of September or end of August, and then finish in March. And all these uh, qualifications before they all take place in your gym. It's uh, all uh, different region. Yeah. From uh, North Island from to the South Island. Uh, last year, we made uh, 10 different uh, regional competitions. Mm. And then the grand final in always our gym. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, this division system is uh, really good system for everyone. Uh, you can compete with uh, Division 5 or you can compete Division 3, you know. I can compete, uh, I'm old now, I can compete maybe Division 3. But then this always like, you know, if you a uh, good result, you go. You can go to the next uh, Division, Division 2. If you your results are not good, it <laughs> yeah, goes yeah, yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. So you can always play, you can compete with... Uh, Your level. Yeah. But still you also climb together with everyone from, from all the divisions somehow because you meet and because you know the funny thing, there's something in Germany Germany like that uh, for bouldering. Okay. Uh, we have a, a Boulder Bundesliga uh-huh. in Germany okay. with also different divisions. And uh, yeah, it's funny that you have a concept like that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah it, everyone can imagine uh, this uh, kind of system, but then just need the effort, you know. Mm, you need to do it. Yeah. Yeah, interesting, uh, cool thing. Yeah, something new. Um, I, and now, what I'm look for? Do you have, like, uh, <laughs> something that you still prepare and plan to do? Um, it's not uh, worldwide, but in, uh, more like uh, east side of Asia. We will start uh, this uh, division thing in Korea. Yeah. And then hopefully other uh, Asian country will uh, cooperate with us and doing things, but like very small step, you know, mm. because I think it's, you can step over easy, you know, but like uh, to maintain for long term, mm. because we started a uh, long, long time ago. We started the 2000. Uh, in 1998, and then division system started uh, 2012. It's uh, always like a small step to make it a uh, stable basement and then go next round, next round. Mm. And how attractive is it for the best athletes of Japan to go there? Because like I know from the German athletes, mm-hmm. they have so many competitions in the year to go to another competition again it takes so much time so are those pro athletes that we see at ifsc competitions also there um yes um also there but then with the olympic game 
the Olympic game attract more mm. this kind of top level climb. So uh, we have to to compete actually with uh, yeah. Olympic Games or World Cup uh, to collect all the. But the still, there are so many good climbers, I guess. In yeah, Japan. still, That's still a lot still. of people go there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think uh, we have to make. Uh, we have to bring them some motivation. I don't know what, but maybe it's prize money. But mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, we we try to to make uh, m- you know more developing this way, yeah. more competition with the division system. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Um, Thank you to hear about all your projects and about your history. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really happy that you uh, wanted to take the time here in Chemnitz <laughs> to speak. I hope that you have a lot of fun here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's a short trip. Uh, it's like uh, only four or five days, and then go back home. That's really short. Yeah, really short. But then it's it's great to see again. You know all the people who work here in uh, Chemnitz and then uh, Blue Peel, you know, Joseph, he came over to my competition uh, two months ago and and this time I really want to meet them and then also, you know, share the the many things, new product, uh, information, love to be here. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> That was my interview with Yuji Hirayama. I hope you found this interesting. I'd be happy if you shared this episode with your climbing friends and maybe you will come back for the next episode of Bin Weg Bouldern. That's it for this episode. Juliane mein Name und ich bin Weg Bouldern. <laughs>